Their names were Paul, George, Ringo, and John. Four friends from Liverpool, England, who became one of the most distinguished and influential bands of our generation, known as the Beatles. Today's artists, such as Dave Grohl, Bruce Springsteen, and the Beach Boys, credit the Beatles as being their inspiration to becoming recording artists. One of these artists, Dave Grohl, has been quoted on saying, Even in Nirvana, the Beatles were such a huge influence. We all loved the Beatles because it was just so simple. Well, it seems simple. They sound easy to play, but you know what? They're hard. To understand the Beatles' legacy and their British invasion, we need to go back to the beginning to their first appearance they made in the United States at the Ed Sullivan Show and the man who was there and responsible for bringing them to the U.S., Vince Kalan. Uh, the Ed Sullivan Show. The Ed Sullivan Show was a TV show that was on CBS every Sunday night between 8 and 9. We were live. It was what we call a, a variety show, which meant we would have a singer, say, a Tony Bennett, and we would have a uh, opera singer like a Roberta Peters. Uh, we, was, uh, we would have a juggling act from the Radio City Music Hall. We would have Tanya the Elephant, an animal act. We'd have something from the circus that was in town. It was basically a, a show, and then we would have rock and roll. We would have the early, you know, like the Young Rascals and some of the early English groups like uh, the Animals and Freddie and the Dreamers and Jerry and the Pacemakers. Ed Sullivan was a 62-year-old man at that time in 1964 that was this newspaper guy. And he was the host of the show. He really had no talent in, other than pointing and, and introducing acts. But there, were, there were basically four people that, that were involved with getting the Beatles uh, and knowing about it. There was uh, Bob Precht, our producer, Ed Sullivan. Uh, believe it or not, we had a talent person in, in, L in uh, London by the name of Peter Pritchard. He was our agent in London plus Jack Babb, who was a talent person who I replaced uh, later on, but I was sort of like a junior talent person. They would, Peter, Peter was part of a, an organization called the Great Organization, and uh, in January of 1963, uh, he would always, he would send uh, letters and, and phone calls to Bob Preck, our producer in the States, and Jack Babb in the States, and Ed Sullivan. Telling, telling us what was going on. He told us about all the Ingus acts, the Topo Gigio, the little uh, mouse that, that everyone loved. Peter was responsible for that. Uh, I went over and we used to go over in the, in the summer, like in July, in, in 63, I became aware of the Beatles. Uh, we had a meeting and Peter and Jack Babb uh, filled us in that uh, they were the hottest thing. And people don't realize that they were they were like the biggest act in the world other than the United States of America. They, they were the number one act in Europe. They sold more records in London than anybody ever did. No one ever sold a million albums or a million records in, uh, in, in England. Before they even got on the plane to come to the United States, they already had a two-picture deal at UA. They, I had never experienced anything like this in my whole lifetime. What had happened was, uh, uh, when they finally got, when they finally came over in February 7th, uh, every radio station was playing a Beatles song. And I Want to Hold Your Hand was like the biggest record, I mean, that was happening. And it was pandemonium. There were, there were over four or 5,000 kids at the airport when they landed that Friday. And John Lennon told me uh, on the stage that Saturday that they, everyone looked like locusts. They looked out the window. They couldn't, they couldn't believe, they, they, they didn't think it was for them. But when they got off the plane, George Harrison said that they had never received such a, a, a greeting in all the, you know, the years they've been playing all over Europe. And uh, they were just like four nice guys. A suit with a shirt and tie, which I never did on Saturdays because I was going to the theater that night. 
and your grandmother was coming in from Brooklyn uh, to meet me and go to the theater and and and, uh, and see the show. Remember, uh, we started the rehearsal, and Neil Aspinall, their their, their road manager, uh, was going to stand in. Okay, Ed Sullivan looks at the backdrop. And it says Beatles. And he goes, why do we have a sign saying the Beatles? Everyone knows who they are. Get rid of the set. Okay? Stop productive. Stop. All of a sudden, they're starting to move the set. Brian Epstein goes running out to Neil, the road manager, and says, you have to go back to the hotel. George's Harrison's sister is at the hotel and the police won't let her go up to the suite because her name is not on the on the list. And Neil jumps into a cab, goes back to the hotel. Now we got the three Beatles standing there. Now the set, they've changed the set. It's the one with the slants and slats. Uh, now they're looking for someone to stand in and John Moffat, our AD and Tim Kiley said, well, look, Vince is about George. Would he be about George's size? He's got a dark suit, shirt and tie on. So I was recorded. I was asked to be the Beatle. So I actually got on stage and as they were still trying, they went to get a guitar for me to put on, which was George Harrison's guitar. And being left-handed, I don't know, I never held a guitar in my hand, so I held a guitar and McCartney was looking at me like started to laugh because I'm, I'm left-handed. So I'm up there and Mal Evans, their road manager, gives, puts the guitar around my neck and all of a sudden you hear this laughter. Now there's a picture of Ed Sullivan with a wick. All of a sudden, Ed Sullivan comes out onto the stage and everyone's hysterical. He takes the wig off and puts it on your grandfather. Now I'm standing there with the guitar and this wig and everyone like is standing around. So finally we got around to the rehearsal. They actually were, at, was, were out there singing and playing with me standing there like a statue. And in all the years I was with the show, no one's ever Never, never, no one's ever asked to go into the control room to hear a playback. So that's when we knew they, you know, they, these three guys really knew what they wanted to do. Well, the, the Beatles have made such an impact, not only on pop music and the way, you know, the way uh, music is, is thought of or, or listened to or composed, is that they, 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 I, I think they changed the world. I mean, they, they're, uh, there, there was their 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 style, their 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 attitude, uh, and I I I I didn't realize it till later on in life the impact that you know that basically basically they had. There would it was hard to explain, but there was something about the four of them that was really really unique. It, I can't explain it. Other than the fact they had this charisma and this likability, they always had this likability about them. But what I liked about them and why they succeeded was they never took themselves serious. But Lennon and McCartney probably were are the two of the greatest uh, song song songwriters uh, that ever lived.